Hello and thank you for attending. My name is Troy Barron from Channel Vision Technology. Today we will be discussing uh, how to get the most out of your professional camera system and some design techniques as well. You will learn how to be more confident in knowing that you're specking in the right product for the job. How to save thousands of dollars with our new distribution methods. And learn many sought after methods to monitor surveillance cameras from the internet and your smartphone. You will also learn camera specifications, product placement, system design, and installation techniques. First we'll begin with camera specifications. Lines of resolutions. What are lines of resolution? They refer to scan lines on your television. They are a reference to the scan lines that create the image that you will see on your television set. Why don't I see these lines on the TV image? Because scan lines happen too quickly for your eye to see. As a side note, a standard TV image from a composite video signal is comprised of 480 scan lines of resolution. So how does all this relate to cameras? Well, cameras have lines of resolution as well. And they range from the standard 380 TV lines all the way up to a 650 high resolution camera. With the higher specification for lines of resolution, the higher the picture quality. What kind of video signals do CCTV cameras produce? Composite video is your answer. You can connect it directly to the yellow RCA input of your television and be able to view the camera directly on your TV. What is the maximum length for a camera installation? You can use up to a thousand feet of cable and still maintain the one volt peak to peak power required to produce an image. Another term that you may hear when dealing with cameras and CCTV systems is lux rating. So what does the lux have to do with cameras? Basically, cameras need a minimum of ambient light in order to produce an image. So if a camera specification says that the minimum illumination required is 0.2 lux, that means that the camera will not produce an image if the ambient light is less than 0.2 lux. So what is a lux? A lux is simply a unit of measurement that quantifies the ambient light. And this can be measured with a light meter. But how does that apply to everyday things? Here is an example of common lux ratings based on ambient light on any given night. For example, 0.25 lux is equivalent to a full moon on a clear night. Just as an example. When dealing with CCTV, another term that you may hear is WDR, or Wide Dynamic Range. Wide Dynamic Range cameras are able to capture and display of both bright and dark areas in the same frame, producing an image where bright areas are not saturated and dark areas are not too dark. Great application if looking indoors at a door or window, for example, which has sunlight behind it. This is an illustration of what a WDR's function would be close up. On the left photograph, you can see that there is no wide dynamic range on. With the bright light coming through the window, your image is washed out. Turning the wide dynamic range feature on enables you to capture the entire scene. So how do cameras work at night? 
and how do night vision cameras work? The answer is that night vision cameras use LED illuminators to shine infrared light, which is invisible to humans, on an object in the dark. This light reflects from the image and produces an image on the camera's sensor. The images shown by night vision cameras will be colored during the day and then revert to black and white at night. The viewing distance is affected by the number of LEDs in the camera and the reflectivity of the object in the viewing area. IR illuminators can also be purchased as a standalone solution for a camera that does not have them built in. Standalone LED illuminators do not contain a camera, but are used to help standard cameras improve their ability to see at night. They can also be improved to uh, use to be improved the existing performance of existing night vision cameras as an additional light source. Note that placing a standalone illuminator near the object to be viewed can be more effective than placing the IR illuminator right near the camera. Another term that you may hear when specking out CCTV cameras is CCD chip format. So what does it mean if a camera has a one quarter inch Sony color CCD? This is the image sensing chip that's built into the camera. The lens focuses light onto this chip to produce an image. The size of the image sensor, known as the format, such as one quarter inch, one third inch, or one half inch, will also play a role in determining the field of view that is seen on the television. There are many calculators that can be found on the internet to help you determine the field of view if you know the lens focal length and the image sensor format or CCD. Speaking of focal length, why should you care about this? And what does it mean for a camera lens? The camera lens determines how large the image will appear on the television. For example, a short lens, a short lens focal length, such as 3.6, will show a large area at a close distance. Whereas a longer focal length, such as 9 millimeters, will show a smaller, more focused area zoomed in at a further distance. How to calculate the lens focal length yourself? To determine how your field of view is going to look with your camera, you need to take down this formula. Take the distance to your target, for example, 20 feet. Divide the width of the target area that you want to view. For example, a 5-foot viewing area, 5 feet wide. Divide your distance by your width, in our case, 20 divided by 5, which equals 4. Side note. Multiply by the size of the camera CCD chip. The 1 3rd inch sensor is equivalent to a fixed number of 4.8. This is a number that is not changing and is provided by uh, the size of the CCD chip is how it determines this fixed number. So next we multiply the width of our target area, which we determine to be 4, by this fixed number for our CCD chip. 4 times 4.8 equals 19.22 millimeters. So to finally determine the approximate field of view, we multiply the area in width by 0.75. The area we wanted to see was 5 feet wide, multiplied by 0.75, which equals 3.75 feet. With this example, you will have a 19, you will need a 19 millimeter lens to see 20 feet away 
and to be able to see a 3.75 feet high by 5 foot wide area. So it's a great example of being able to view the upper torso of a person walking through a door 20 feet away require, would require a 19.22 millimeter lens. Here's an illustration of a field of view calculator um, and the image that it would produce at a 15 foot range. With the 3.6 millimeter lens on the camera on the left will yield a 20 foot wide by 15 foot high viewing area. 15 feet away with a 6 millimeter lens will yield a 12 foot wide area by 9 feet high. So more focused, more zoomed in. And if you used a focal length of 9 millimeters, you would get a close-up view of an 8 foot wide by 6 foot high viewing area. Now if you were 25 feet away with the same three cameras, with a 3.6 millimeter lens, you would have a 33 foot wide viewing angle by 25 foot high area of coverage. If you were using a 6 millimeter lens, it would be 20 feet wide by 15 feet high. If you were using a more zoomed focal length of 9 millimeters, you would yield a 13 foot by 10 foot viewing area. This was an example of how the CCD chips and the viewing distance combined with the focal length will yield you a photo or image on your screen. Now we will discuss installation of pan tilt zoom cameras. Pan tilt zoom cameras use what's called RS-485. So what is that and how does it work? Well RS-485 is a serial control methodology that allows many different items to be interconnected together and be controlled by a single device. It was originally developed to control machines and factories, but is very well suited for a large camera system as well. When dealing with pan tilt zoom cameras, you will also hear a term or standard referred to as PELCO P and PELCO D protocols. PELCO P and PELCO D are serial control protocols from RS-485 connections that establish a common language which is understood by both the controller and the camera. There are other protocols as well, but these are the most common. On our cameras, you will find dip switch configurations which are typically used to select the desired protocol for your application. There are additional types of cameras which we will further discuss as well, including pinhole cameras, flush mount cameras, dome cameras, pan tilt zoom cameras, as well as bullet cameras. Now we'll discuss some of their applications. How to select the camera type? Well, pinhole cameras are great for covert surveillance, trying to be unobtrusive and not seen. Flush mount cameras offer a unobtrusive look and often used indoors. Bullet cameras are probably the most versatile, great for outdoors. Dome cameras are often very versatile units as well, both good for indoor and outdoor areas and are often uh, can be used in areas where vandalism may occur. You also hear about IP cameras, which are viewable over the internet using a Cat5 to a switch and create a scalable system. Pan tilt zoom cameras or motorized cameras that allow cameras to both pan, tilt, and zoom functions from a remote control device. The first set we'll look at are some of Channel Vision's analog camera series. Here you have a 550 TV line resolution bullet, great for viewing uh, in the dark at distances of up to 100 feet away. We also have a 540 TV line resolution camera that can see up to 60 feet in the dark and has a three axis adjustable mount that can be used outdoors as well. 
For the covert application, we do have high-resolution pinhole cameras, including a 560 TV line camera resolution, which will get you a very nice image. We also have wide dynamic range cameras, some that we talked about earlier as well, available in a pinhole variety, as well as IR illuminated dome cameras for indoor use that can be discrete, give you a high quality resolution, and still be able to see in the dark up to 60 feet away. Television also carries wide dynamic range cameras in both indoor and vandal resistant models both with high resolution including 650 TV lines, wide dynamic range feature, as well as infrared capability to see in the dark. IP cameras are the wave of the future. Channel Vision's IP cameras are available in both a dome and a bullet and offer high resolution at HD resolution at a 1600 by 1200 resolution equated to 2 megapixels of quality as well as having bare focal lenses, which means they can be adjusted manually, waterproof rating, have multiple compression methods including H.264, MPEG-4, and motion JPEG streaming, which are compression formats, as well as 3G smartphone viewing capability, power over Ethernet, along with the central management software that is included that enables you to view 36 cameras on one computer system without any additional licensing, as well as the ability to have analog recording, as well as being on bit compliant, implying that they work with standard NVRs from the industry, and have drivers available for control for touchscreen automation. Basically, there's a lot of features in these cameras. In addition, they have a built-in web server, which means you can record HD quality in real time. Both H.264 and MPEG-4 codecs. Live video can also be recorded to a computer and played back remotely, as well as viewed from any mobile phone and other device in the world. Typically, IP cameras are designed for large commercial projects or even single-family homes, depending on the application. And all of these items can be used indoors or outdoors and view on your Control 4 touchscreens. The concept of an IP camera is a camera that's plugged into the network, not directly to a DVR. And this IP camera then from the network can be viewed from any computer or phone or can utilize the central management software system that it comes with and be able to record to off-site storage. Additional camera applications that we will encounter is the use of a modulator. So why would you use a modulator? Well, modulators allow several CCTV cameras to be distributed on one coax cable by placing each camera on a separate TV channel. Without a modulator, only one camera signal can occupy the coax at a single time. So how can I see multiple cameras on my TV screen at once? The answer is yes, but you would need a DVR, which can place all the camera views on one composite video signal. Then you can then output that video signal to a modulator. Which would you look like this? Can I see multiple cameras on one TV screen? Absolutely. Where would you view your cameras? Most cameras and DVRs can be viewed on a computer monitor with a VGA input or a composite video signal on a television through an RF modulator input on the channel, the television's tuner, via the computer monitor through a computer web page. Some cameras and DVRs even have the ability to be viewed on your cell phone, your touch screen, or even your iPad. We'll briefly discuss DVRs as well. DVRs, the 3G series from Channel Vision, seen here, as USB ports, dual streaming, dual video outputs, VGA, 
main and spot monitoring, audio inputs and outputs, sensors, and a simple data set uh, network setup and is available in 4, 8, or 16 channels. Some of those features outlined a little further include dual USB ports which allow a port on the front for copying data to a flash drive as well as a port in the rear that you could use a USB mouse to control your navigation through your DVR. The DVRs also have available hard drives in selectable sizes from 250, 500 gigabytes or 1 terabyte of storage. Depending on your setup, an average camera viewing on an average resolution with a 250 gig hard drive will yield approximately two weeks of recording with a 500 gig approximately four weeks and up to eight weeks of recording on your average setting with a one terabyte hard drive. There are additional variables involved. This is just however a guideline. Dual streaming is a feature that's also built into the Channel Vision G Series DVR which means that you'll have 20% more capacity than past generation H.264 DVRs. The concept of dual streaming allows for a high resolution image to be recorded to the hard drive while a lower resolution image can be viewed simultaneously from a smartphone without compromising quality. <clears throat> dual video output enables you to have a traditional CCTV monitor output and the VGA monitor at the exact same time. Some more useful functions that you'll find in the G-Series include still image snapshot in the playback mode. Each channel can be individually customized by resolution, frame rate, and video quality, as well as having an AVI file converter built into it so that you can submit it directly to the police without having to use any third-party software. It's great to have the same on-screen display with both the DVR when you log in remotely as when you're looking at it directly. So there's no need to learn two different formats. Individual user authority management grants certain people access to certain features. Included with the professional central management software enables you to uh, manage your viewing of your cameras and grouping them as well. And has the ability to be viewed over your smartphone. The user interface, as we mentioned, would look exactly the same when you log in from the computer as if you were looking at it directly. Your individual user authority would enable you to grant certain access to certain people. For example, I could grant user 1 access to cameras 1, 2, and 3, but not camera 4. Or give them the ability to view, but not delete. Additional features allows you to manage your DVR securely. The central management software that we outlined earlier is included and does enable you to connect up to 16 of the same G-Series DVRs on the same platform. So if you have a shop owner that has multiple locations, he can have two DVRs be able to log in from his home in the Bahamas, be able to see all the cameras, group them accordingly, such as loading docks, cash registers in the lobby, and even be able to record to his remote desk. Here's an example of what the, the session management software looks like. Mobile phone monitoring allows you to connect to your DVR anywhere in the world via a convenient app for your phone. There's an app for that. Whether it's an Android, Apple, Windows Mobile, or even a Blackberry, Channel Vision has you covered. Just a few additional product features in the G-Series DVR. You do have the ability to have a live display, record, backup, playback, and access the network simultaneously without having to stop one function to perform another. Using the built-in SATA hard drive ensures that you'll be able to work with any hard drive that you see fit. To sweeten the deal a little bit, Channel Vision has included some kits to help package your solutions for you. Channel Vision, the DVR 43G kit includes the DVR, the lockbox, and an IR repeater system for control. 
The Kit 2 enables you to have the DVR, four outdoor cameras, and the hard drive for a great price, as well as the indoor kit, which is the DVR Kit 3. If you also have a web server feature where you can have one channel viewing video server, this feature has H.264, Motion JPEG, and MJPEG streaming at full resolution, 720 by 480 resolution, with the ability to record to an SD card, two-way audio, and have up to 10 users log in simultaneously including motion detection and RS-232 for control. A web server enables you to take an analog camera or the video output from your DVR and essentially make any camera or any analog camera an IP camera. This can also be viewed on your smartphone or set to off-site recording storage. Also, the Affinity Digital Cable Combiner is another addition that can help you save thousands of dollars without having to retrofit an entire install. The Affinity Cable Combiner enables you to modulate on digital cable without using any filters, any second video runs, or losing any channels. It supports up to two modulated inputs as eight television outputs with a built-in I repeater system. It's perfect for retrofit solutions. The anatomy of the cable combiner includes status indicator lights, IR status for your IR repeaters, two modulated inputs, eight television outputs, IR emitter outputs for control, and a cable TV input. Think of this as the eight-way splitter that your cable provider installs. Basic application combines the modulated signal with that of the digital cable signal uses the existing line that's already at the television and then enables you to have an IR over coax adapter at each television. This is required of each TV that wants to view your cameras because this tells the cable combiner to switch inputs between the modulated signal and the digital cable signal. Then you have a splitter dividing the signal to your television's cable box and to the tuner of your television. It's a switch. We're modulating on the television's tuner, not the tuner of the cable box. Just to recap what we talked about today, we reviewed many of the camera specifications, camera placement, how to design a system, and a few installation techniques. Additional featured services that Channel Vision offers is 24-7, 365-type support. Call us anytime if you have a problem. We do offer 1- and 10-year power warranties, free trainings, free system design, and custom building opportunities. Additional product lines from Channel Vision include Channel Vision Central, which is our structured wiring product line, a full line of IR control systems, including our RE Audio line, including a full line of high-performance speakers, as well as A-Bus audio for multi-room audio, audio and power over Cat5, trusted name and intercom systems, both for the front door, telephone entry systems, and the whole house, as well as surveillance solutions and Channel Vision exclusive technology. Channel Vision's new application and guide can be found on ChannelVision.com's website. Download the latest one to have the most up-to-date product info at the touch of your hands. We do have a showroom of con, uh, industry accommodation available for purchase as well. Please contact Channel Vision at www.channelvision.com or call the number below for anything that you may need. Thank you. Have a great day.